At the highest level of control are style presets, which are found at the style icon with the artwork at the left of the shelf. This icon opens the style presets UI with a few predefined styles. You can load this anytime by selecting one and hitting the load button. This will automatically set all the attributes in the style configuration node and give you a head start. We will go over each attribute in the configuration node soon, but before that, just remember that you can save your own presets anytime. The style presets we just used modify the style configuration node, which is the next level of control. The style configuration node, selected when clicking the conf icon with a color palette, contains each global parameter that is applied to the entire rendered image. The attributes in these nodes are separated into four groups, which will be explained next. Engine settings contain the attributes directly related to the MNPR engine. Style enables you to change between unique styles currently supported by MNPR. We can switch to another style with just a click of a button. For now, let's stick to our watercolor stylization. Color depth defines the color depth of the render targets. This translates to higher is better, but slower systems should consider using 8-bit targets if the render is too slow and you can sacrifice some color fidelity. Render scale defines the resolution at which MNPR is rendering. Normal will render at the normal viewport resolution. Half will render at half the size, which will perform better with slower computers at the cost of pixelation. Double will render at twice the size and then reduce the rendered image to fit the viewport. You will have more detail and less aliasing, but make sure to have a powerful computer. Depth range sets the linear depth range, which will be useful for certain effects. This is scene dependent, so you will need to set this attribute right. To do so, open the Pass tool and change the active target to linear depth. Now you should tweak the low and high depth range so that your entire scene is visible, like in this example. Do remember to set the active target back to the output target to see your stylization again. More on the pass tool is explained in a later tutorial. Atmospheric tint lets you define a custom atmospheric perspective color, making things at distance tint towards the specified color. This scene has a white atmospheric perspective color, which makes things at distance fade to white. However, this can easily be changed to introduce completely different moods. Atmosphere range sets the range at which the atmospheric tint will begin and end, as seen currently on screen. Style attributes contain the attributes of the currently loaded style, in this case, watercolor. Pigment density increases the amount of pigment accumulated at the values of the paper, giving the render a more concentrated or darker look. Edge darkening intensity sets the global strength of the edge darkening. Edge darkening width defines the global width for edge darkening. The rest of the attributes modify how some localized effects work, which will become relevant once we apply them in the scene. Let's briefly introduce them. Bleeding radius control how strong the bleeding effect can be. Bleeding threshold modifies how the bleeding reacts with objects at nearby depths. Drybrush threshold control how sharp the drybrush application looks. Max gaps overlaps width controls the maximum pixel width considered by the gaps and overlaps effect. Substrate attributes contain the attributes of the substrate where paint is applied on, be it paper or canvas. Substrate textures lets you choose between different MNPR compatible substrate textures. Substrate color defines the color of the substrate. Substrate shading lets you design the amount of diffuse shading of the substrate. Substrate light direction defines the side where the light is shining from. 0 degrees is from the bottom, 90 degrees is from the left, 180 from the top and 270 degrees is from the right. Substrate light tilt defines the tilt angle of the light in relation to the substrate. 90 degrees is perpendicular to the substrate. Substrate scale defines the size of the texture. Substrate update defines the times per second that the texture should update over time. Substrate roughness controls the overall roughness of the substrate. Substrate distortion controls the distortion caused by the roughness of the substrate. Post-processing attributes contain simple but useful self-explanatory post-processing filters. These include saturation, brightness and contrast. This concludes the tutorial on style presets and global controls. 
these controls represent the highest level of control. As such, they can completely change the way your scene is stylized with just a few clicks. This level of control is excellent for setting an initial style or to quickly switch between styles. Remember you can always save your global controls as a preset and load them back with any scene, so don't worry about going wild moving things around. 